What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, I'm giving you guys a follow-up to my last video, which was on standard TVZ. This time, I got you guys a game where everything went wrong for me. I took a lot of damage in the early game, and I'm going to explain to you guys my thought process behind getting back into the game, uh, regaining momentum, and then closing it out. So I got this. Uh, this person is about 5.5k on Europe, 5.5k Zerg. And I'm going to play the exact same build I did in the previous video. So this is going to be a 3cc Banshee video. Or game, sorry. So it's going to be a 3cc Banshee game. And I'm not going to spend too much time on the build order itself because it's not really that important. Um, what's going to be important is what's going to happen in the mid-game. <clears throat> so I'm going to speed it up here a little bit. Going to send maybe across the map. Simple scouting, right? I'm going to see if there's a third base. Factory is coming up. I see six links. That's not unusual per se. That's uh, a lot of Korean Xerix build six slings and a lot of European Xerix build four slings. So it just depends on maybe who they watch or maybe the region they're playing from. So this person went six slings, but it's not really making much of a difference to just have more slings. They can do something like this, maybe split up some slings and send them across the map, which is actually a good move on my opponent's part. So already a little bit of aggression here. Their command center is on the way, and so this Marine does die, and that's fine. It dies. And basically, when the Marine dies, honestly, the be the only thing they can really capitalize capitalize on is being able to send the Overlord into your main base and actually scout you. So if you're like doing something really cheeky, this will hurt you. In this case, I'm playing very standard. So even though I'm playing three, so because I'm playing very standard and I'm playing three CC Banshee, it's fine. Like I like they're gonna scout me. You can be like, "Why wow, he's playing standard?" That's it. So don't stress about it. You know, if you're doing another build that's more aggressive. If you lose the Marine, there's a possibility to send the Overlord in. In this case, I actually don't think he sent the Overlord in. And uh, let me lower this a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so 3cc Banshee, like I said, coming up. I accidentally flew my racks a little bit too far away there. A couple of scouting links. So the aggression that happens is uh, going to be when I try to land on my third in about two minutes now, where basically my opponent. It's gonna pause link production or drone production and just build a bunch of links randomly as they're getting this third base set up. And they basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to not only surround my Hellions and kill my Hellions very quickly, but they're also trying to just ransack my SV line, my SV count, especially on my third base. So what you're gonna see is my Hellions are gonna be out on the map like this right here. And as my Hellions are out on the map, my opponent's gonna build a bunch of Zerglings and then counterattack with a bunch of them. So. Drum production here should be continuing. And honestly, with only five, seven queens, you could probably see about one more, but seven queens, pretty good count. It's gonna take a fourth base after the Ling uh, situation. But so basically here, as you can see, a layer starts, a couple of overlords get built. And then what you're gonna see now are 18 Zerglings get queued up with even more Zerglings following up. So I obviously have no idea that this is happening. And it's really hard to scout this because there's only specific circumstances that will allow you to see this so number one you know let's say i decide i want to dive my hellions into the natural right now if i were to do that then i would see the link spawn i would still lose my hellions but then i would know that that my opponent built a bunch of zerglings uh the other option is that you basically you know for whatever reason let's say you decide that you're rotating hellions this way you go into the third and you zap some drones by doing that you might see the links come out of the larva here Otherwise, there's really no realistic way for you to know that this is happening. So don't stress about like, okay, well, how do I figure out it's happening? Because there's a lot of things that you just aren't reasonably expected to know or have a means of knowing. And this is one of them. So you're going to have to f deal with this as it happens this is, and as, as you scout it. <clears throat> so these links come out here. And if you notice, I'm resting my Hellions away from the creep. So my opponent can't see my Hellions are here because I'm by the side blockers. Now, if my opponent did see that my Hellions were here, what they could do is then surround my Hellions with the Zerglings and then counterattack me and it'd probably kill me or just do tons of damage. All right. So with your Hellions, a general like rule of thumb and good habit to have is to just make sure you leave everything hidden away from the creep. So if you're not going to use the Hellions and you want to do something else, that's okay. You can do that. Just don't leave your Hellions sitting in the middle of the map. They will die. Okay. So that's why you don't see him try to go for this. You see the links get split up. Then my Hellions come here. At this point, the links are already going across the map, and my Banshees are also across the map. I kill a couple of these links. Now, initially seeing this amount of links, it looked very normal to me. The only suspicious thing that I felt 
in this scenario was that he was being very aggressive with the links and losing the links and not really sending them back home to defend. Or, sorry, just to retreat to not lose them. So I got a little bit suspicious there. So what you're going to see me do here is after I kill these, I actually send them home. And as I send them home, these come in. Now, obviously, my Banshees are across the map. I only really have Hellions. I got, like, two Marines here. If you look at my army supply, he's up about 10 army supply, and some of my army supplies are missing across the map. So what you're going to see here is all my SCDs, my fresh mules, are going to die. And my Hellions will live. Some of them will live. But, of course, I have to lift my base. The command center dies. All my workers are dying. I'm killing some Hellions. i sorry, some Zerglings here. But at this point... Not you know, lost mining time. I can't produce SCVs from this command center. Losing some marines. And my banshees didn't really do any eco damage. Like I was so worried about navigating, defending this, that I put my banshees to the side and I mostly focus on defending the Hellions on defending the Zerglings. So that's that's what you want to do. When this happens, don't get caught up on like using the base trying to use the banshees and then also defend your base because it's honestly unless you're playing super fast pro level, you're not reasonably expected to do that. So I wouldn't even try to do it. So try to just do one thing correctly as much as you can, which is going to be this. It's going to be defending your third, defend it as well as you can, don't worry about the Banshees later. But if you try to do both, then you're kind of like not doing either one to your 100% efficiency. So then they're both going to do not that great, and you might take even more damage, be more behind because you're trying to maneuver and navigate both things. So just stick with the Hellions, defending your base. And once you do that, then you get some Banshees in, which is what I do here. But then my Banshees also don't really do any damage. At this point, there's an Overseer. Then I miscontrol the Banshees by accidentally sending them back. So I lose a Banshee, almost as a second Banshee, and now I have nothing, right? So I'm down in supply. My second factory is late. You know, in the last video, we talked about how at 650, 655, I had a fourth base started. At this point, I cannot afford a, six, a fourth base. I don't even have an armory. So now to the main topic of this video. What do you do in this case? Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to set up your early game defense. Okay, at this point, we cannot afford to take more damage, or at least we want to mitigate as much damage as possible. So, in this case, I'm building Siege Tanks. If you're playing Widow Mines first, you can also still do this. You basically want to set up your splash, da splash damage at home. Tank here, tank here, you know, tank defense, or maybe tank right here. You know, this tank will help with run bys here. This high ground tank will help you if they push down here. Same thing with this tank, or if they try to run by into your main. So that's going to be the first thing. In this case, I am playing tanks. You can do the same thing with Widow Mines. Widow Mine here. Widow Mine here. Widow Mine here. Widow Mine here, right? Or farther out, even. So that's going to be the first step. Setting up your defense. After you do that, and I'll show you guys how I do it. After you set up that defense, your next step is to then try to clear some of the creep with the Marines and the Medivacs. Okay. At this point, I'm not reasonably expected to send a 1-1 push across the map. Could I maybe right now send a push? Sure. But then it's very risky. I don't actually know how many links my opponent has built. I don't know how many drones have been built. He already has Bane link speed. So there's a lot of factors I play. I don't have a lot of Marines yet. I still don't have combat shields. So in this case, I decide I'm not going to do the push. I'm going to keep producing units and clear creep. So tanks set up here. Tank set up here. I leave the Hellions at home. If you have any Banshees left over, you can leave them up here or even over here as well and then try to catch some run buys. And this is going to help you a lot with just like, you know, even sometimes they don't care. Sometimes they'll just do the run by anyway, but it's going to help you kill stuff before the run by hits your mineral line and you'll take less damage because of that. Okay. Now, here I'm going to be clearing the creep, like I said. And at this point here, I'm just going to clear it anywhere. Later on, I'm going to push to where there's less creep. But for now, I'm just going to clear the creep no matter where it is. And let me put some StarCraft music. It's awfully silent here. Okay. Oops. Wrong button there. So that's what I do. I'm clearing creep. I'm getting 2-2. Two, two. Drilling claws. I'm still getting, like, my important and my essential upgrades, you know? Uh, but like you can tell I don't have a fourth yet. And I'm kind of struggling a little bit economically. My opponent's starting high already. Here I'm getting a couple of Bailing Snipes. You know, whatever value you can get, it's great. But this is all I'm getting, okay? Obviously, I'm not taking trade off fights. As you can see, my opponent's banking some minerals. I'm just trying to get whatever little trades, whatever little skirmishes I can get. And then fly away. 
And that's what you're going to do. Once I get Drilling Claws and some Widow Mines set up, then I can push. And that'll be step three. So step two right now is to just, you know, with one double medevac drop, clear some creep, kill a couple of lings, but just don't risk too much of your army. Get some good defense set up. Okay. And wait for your timing later on. We really want to wait for Widow Mines because with Widow Mines, then we can start getting some big Widow Mine shots and that'll help with gaining momentum. Okay. So here we're continuing step two. Defend, or sorry. Set up some multi-prong, clear some cream. I'm going to start doing that now. So now I'm going to do two medevacs. You don't have to do two medevacs. You can do one or one pair of two. I thought he was going to have this space. He actually did it. And I ended up catching this space at the right time. And that's a kill. So now this is really good. Now here, check this out. So my drilling clause is finished and I have water mines coming out. Now that I have these two mines and, I'm, and, that, and I know that my drilling clause is finished, I'm going to send these units to now pressure this side. Okay. I have four medevacs in total. You really want to make sure you have enough medevacs to be able to pick up all your units. So if you're sending 18 or if you're sending like 25 Marines across the map, but you only have two medevacs, that's not a really good idea. I would try to have enough medevacs to be able to pick up everything in case things go wrong. Okay. That'll help you retain as many units as possible. Here, I noticed that my drop had pulled my opponent's army down to this base. Okay, and this drop still lives. Knowing that, I want to keep the pressure up. So step three is about creating space. It's about ha creating momentum by either a multi-prong, by some sort of maneuver, so that you can start pushing and making some advancements across the map. In this case, it took one drop here for my opponent to then send their army, to really get their army down here, and to then now continue to chase it and try to catch his medevac. One medevac with eight Marines is honestly very low commitment. Okay. My economy has stabilized. I have a fourth base coming up. If I lose this medevac, it's fine. If I can get some decent trades from this. So risking this one medevac, it could be a liberator, a mind drop. You know, it doesn't have to be eight Marines. But the point is for sub three, you want to do some, some, something, some sort of aggression, some sort of like harassment to pull the enemy to the opposite side of the map or just have them split their army or something like that. Which is what this is going to do. Now he's kind of having trouble kind of dealing with this, right? Having to use the queens. As then, now he repositions the lings and banes. But now I've been able to clear the creep here. And I've been able to advance up here. Okay. Losing a queen here. That's nice for me. I'm actually killing some units. Even two queens now. And because obviously, because he's so focused on all the other stuff happening. And he's not even able to use transfuse. He doesn't have any more transfuse. He can't perfectly micro two things. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what the frick happened there. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'll pause. I need some water. I'm too far in to not continue making this video. Okay, so <laughs> he's making some micro mistakes because he has a lot to focus on. Right, a lot going on, so he's going to lose a queen. He's going to make some mistakes, right? So I'm not even microing this, and I kill the queen. There are two queens. Here, now, I see a very low bane count. Seeing a very low bane count actually makes me want to stay. And I know it's kind of hard to tell in the game as it's happening. So the other option that you can use is to rely on the Widow Mine. So I have my medevacs with my Marines. Try to keep your medevacs as close as you can to your Marines so that I can pick up here. This mine detonates. There's no Overseer. Bam. Fat Widow Mine shot. 24 links right there. That Widow Mine shot is now giving me momentum to get back into the game or to start retaking map control. You see that? Here, I notice not that many Banes. I position myself in some nice terrain here. I miss Micro there trying to target the Bane Lings. And now I'm killing even more Lings, right? Now behind this, I'm still producing units. As you can see, my fourth base is about to finish. I got all my defense here. And now I'm getting excellent trades. I know my opponent is making some mistakes. Okay, but your opponents are not going to play perfect either. So it is what it is. All right, so now we're activating step three which is now I'm on the map, I've gained momentum, I've distracted my opponent, I killed the base, I'm getting, you know, back, getting my presence back on the map. Step four is now getting AP to take my fourth, and this is the last step. You just retake your fourth. If you're getting, if you've been getting very good trades, you can now conjoin your forces together. So whatever army that I produce here, I will combine it with this army that I've produced here. And I'm now going to do one big push down the middle instead of kind of like this guerrilla warfare style. So that's what you're going to see. Now I take everything. Again, I leave my tanks, right? Because I am about defense. I leave my tanks at home to be safe. I know my opponent's been playing very aggressive and I don't want to lose my mineral line. 
So I'm going to do that. And now I'm pushing with all these forces together. Splitting up some laborers to harass. There's some mine micro. Um, and now I'm getting the like, trades and I'm regaining momentum. So at this point, I'm just going to keep pushing. Got my fourth. And now, as you can see, taking everything again across the map as I'm harassing. And yeah, so I'm just going to end this replay here. I'm just going to, yeah, as you can see, I'm just going to kill this stuff. Uh, ate some bailing shots there, but had some cool micro, I guess. And yeah, they're trading very well. You know, everything else about this, I try to do as perfectly as I can, right? Or as I could have. I try to get my upgrades on time. I try not to take any more damage. I'm getting the correct production facilities. You know, I made sure to get a fourth. I'm still trying to get all my macros as, as like perfect as I can get it. And as long as you're able to do that, you know, using that using that step step three, sending something to harass as you push in, it'll save you a lot of trouble there. And it'll get you back on the map. And now I've got momentum, right? Because I keep taking good trades. And so now I'm going to be even more committed. I'm going to run down the middle here. I'm even rallying units across the map. That's how confident I am at this point. And I see the banelings more if I'm going to do some splits. Yeah, I don't think I took the best splits here, but... <laughs> but yeah, he's out of money. So I have an army left over. I'm going in there. And notice my medivacs are always really close to my army. So if worst comes to worst and I need to pick up and fly away, medivacs are there. And that's really the beauty of it is if there's no mutas, even if there's hydrants, if there's no mutas, if, if worst comes to worst, you pick up, you fly away, and you're, you're cool. You're fine. So as long as you keep the medivacs close by, You'll be able to pick up your units, even if you, even if they get surrounded or something like that. And uh, yeah, that's basically gonna be it, guys. And here are just extra raxes, some SMEs now pumping up to 80. Going across the map, killing some stuff, and there you go. So, just to summarize, step one is gonna be setting up your defense for the run buys, right? Not getting stuff kind of like killed or defending and defending the links perfectly as well as you can step two then is going to be setting up your transition so still getting everything together tanks in these positions right um and then step three once you get widow mines out you then want to send oh sorry step two is also using the marines with the matter across the map clear some creep um trade a little bit but you're not really doing anything committed step three becomes more committed step three is once you have mines then you send some sort of a harassment unit to the side or somewhere to pull the army away so that your you know your main force can go up to top and then you try to try to use the water mines as an anchor to get some momentum with some connections um, or just killing links picking up flying away and then once you start getting some momentum by doing that step four is going to be then conjoining whatever forces you have you know across the map if you're split pushing or whatever you've macroed at home you can join them together and do a more committed push and still if you can try to send some harassment units so that's the summary for this video guys if you enjoyed it please give it a like subscription or subscribe to my youtube channel i'll keep uploading videos and uh yeah super appreciate all the support guys we're pushing almost 1k subs which is pretty sick so i'm gonna keep trying my best to upload and for those of you guys who made it this far into the video i super appreciate it and uh, if you guys have any questions feel free to let me know and i'll catch you guys in the next video